Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic, and we are back with more reactions for Supergirl, uh, this time on to episode number 11, and last time we had uh, Nia making, going through with the deal for Nixie, and then, you know, suffering the consequences of it afterwards, actually having her mother back for 24 hours, but then being completely locked out of the, the real world, and instead being in like a magical pocket dimension where no one would know she was there either any any time anyone thought of where she was or wanted where she was their thoughts would be diverted to more kind of urgent matters so no one really knew she was gone no one really kind of thought about why she was gone or anything like that so that was her dilemma and then she actually got to spend some time with her mother and i think i actually did look up the um look up uh, her mother's name afterwards i actually couldn't remember her name so her mother's name was isabel isabel no so that was cool, but Isabel came back to life for 24 hours inside said magical dimension, and then she actually kind of took me through and actually kind of reassured her things would be okay, but gave her like a gave her like like a lot less a, a fair a fair amount less than I was actually expecting because I think I was I I, I I I I was kind of half expecting some kind of actual kind of lesson or some kind of you know like some kind of like mentorship kind of thing uh, I, I guess maybe on, on some level but i think for the most part it was just her kind of reassuring me um that she would be able to kind of get through this and that she has to actually kind of take control and actually stop running and, and, and to actually stop running away from her her visions out of fear of misunderstanding them or out of fear of not knowing what they really mean and also she taking accountability for her actions like releasing nixley upon the world and everything so it was a fun little kind of uh, kind of, kind of fun like, kind of like half kind of episode or kind of plot between them. So that was cool. And then finally Nia comes out of that thing, you know, just finally feeling ready to face off against Nixley and actually finally feeling ready to, you know, atone for those like 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 for that particular mistake and everything. Because um, Nixley came out and Nixley actually managed to actually jump back into the real world and actually kind of use the uh, the Mitch guy from the Naxim talk and Mitch kind of duo. Um, to set a trap for, for Supergirl and then to use the rest of her kind of heat vision power that she used to take down the nuclear ice bomb to recharge herself and give her more magic. So now N Nixley's, I think, I think Nixley's at like most of her power, if not full power, but then she was still strong enough to actually reincarnate the ice around Supergirl to trap her and then she brought the Ormfell building down as a whole thing. Um, but yeah, but then because Nixley said that only magic can beat magic, um, the, uh, Supergirl brought, brought in the only other magical kind of fifth dimensional imp that she knew would be on her side for the story. So she summoned, she summoned Mixus Pidlick. She summoned Mr. Mixus Pidlick back into this, and now he's back, Thomas Lennon. Thomas Lennon is back as Mr. Mixus Pidlick. Um, so it's going to be cool seeing how him and Nixon, uh, Nick, Nixley get along and how he works with uh, the Super Friends to try and bring her down and try and to actually kind of maybe even I think I think I'm wondering like maybe even actually taking her home and actually like promising to help and do all sorts of things so that would be fun to see um but yeah that was them and then we had Trooper Girl still fighting the good fight for both Orlando and Joey like they were actually on the cusp of finding some sense of stable accommodation but then you know capitalism and corporate greed had to come in and try and take that away from them but then in the end they did manage to actually sway the voters and actually still get the Ormfell building into the hands of the um the uh, the uh previously incarcerated in the accommodation program so that was cool. That was cool. So some good uh, social justice on Supergirl's side, and then some more magical stuff uh, on Nia's side that manages to blend in nicely in the end. So yeah, it should be fun. And we had some um, Ke um, Kelly and Alex training too. Kelly was training Alex and actually te teaching her to fight as guard and everything. And I think um, Kelly was having trouble kind of mastering exactly what Alex was showing her. But then she showed initiative. She she showed she showed some ingenuity and initiative and some of her own kind of. Um, in, in, in ingeniousness and she actually used it like a, like a move that she knew and actually used that against Alex so I think you know she kind of like felt insecure for not like not really being able to, to understand or master everything that Alex was teaching her and actually wondering if that meant that you know and um, that definitely still kind of affected the way that she saw herself on the team wondering if she was actually on par with the rest of them and actually wondering if she was actually kind of like a scratch with the rest of them so you know, um, Kelly kind of still has a bit of a ways to go, but I feel like it's got to be close. It's got to be close. Her claiming that guardian identity and her actually kind of like, I, I just, I just, as the episodes go by, I'm more and more anxious. As the episodes go, go by, I am more and more anxious to see exactly how the guardian Kelly debut is going to go down, how, how, how beautiful it's going to be, how, how amazing it's going to be to see finally in live action. But 
I guess good things come to those who wait, but I hate how long the CW is making me wait. I hate it, but again, all good things come to those who wait, so as long as I just keep chanting that in my head until the episode finally comes, it'll all feel like it's been worth it, and it'll all feel like payoff, so yeah, um, but I think she, she, she's edging closer, she's actually getting closer and closer to actually finally being able to achieve that, and actually finally feeling like she's earned that title, and actually finally feeling like she's actually ready to suit up and do what needs to be done, so hopefully soon, hopefully soon. But yeah, that is pretty much all I've got. So we got uh, Nick Slee, and we got Mick Spitlick, and we got Nia getting back in with Dreamer and everything. So yeah, I think I'm wondering if maybe we we can get Lena back at some point too. I mean, I'm 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 curious. I mean, because I mean, I I don't um I don't want to if um, I don't know because I think I think I don't know like I don't know how soon it can be when they can actually have everyone on screen without having to worry about too much. Because I think you know, granted, like like they would still need to be careful with COVID and everything, but then. I am kind of curious as to like 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 if there's actually a point where I mean it has to be soon or maybe like in the finale where they actually finally have everyone on screen without fear of like actually having too too too, too many people together. Some um, you know if, if they bring if if they bring Lena back in this, then does that mean we lose Kelly again? We don't see her until she, until the next time she suits up or something. So I don't I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. But either way, um, should be fun. Should be super duper fun. So that will be. Good to see, but yeah, that is pretty much all I've got from the last one. So on to episode number eleven of this final season of Supergirl. Uh, on to the reaction. So as you guys will know, this will just be the phase version, just the highlights and the best bits of the episode. But if you guys want to catch the full length version, then that one will be over on Patreon. So you can go check that out over there. So yeah, Supergirl season six, episode eleven. Let's go. He's mine. He's. What? Oh, oh, damn, cartwheels. Cartwheels, what? You both did. 300 years ago when you stood before a judge and called me crazy. You were trying to make oh, see of the fifth dimension. Only those that betrayed me. Uh, Don't you worry. Wicked King Burpix. King Burpix, the one name that's actually easy to pronounce. They can track it, right? Yeah. Yeah, she can track. It means that even with the tower's cloaking shields Unless this place has a decent sound system. A decent sound system? I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Oh, well, they have speakers, yes. So. You'll see that I'm afraid. Oh, musical mixy. Musical mixy. Oh, there's Thomas Lennon. I'm, so, I'm not surprised. Yeah. Who was bad to every infant oh, God. The thing and sent to travel. <laughs> oh, boy. Just bringing flashbacks for Melissa. This is bringing flashbacks for her. Patriarchy. She would survive. Yeah, the song sounds very familiar. Yeah, the tune sounds very familiar, but I can't place it exactly. Everything. Everything as the reality, all of it. Everything. Energy. Matter. Magic. Even life and death. It's like an infinity Other stone. Out about yeah. it, they or just what, all of them combined into one. The all stone, scattering the pieces throughout the so they became infinity stones. Yeah. Truth, destiny, love, ah. dreams, hope, humanity, and courage. Like the paragon. Pretty much every planet has a set. With the blood of Jared inside it. And guess who has two thumbs and is Jared's last descendant? Mixie. Oh, that's so why she needs him. Oh, isn't he going to tell them that... She's the reason that Nixley made it through. It's not like you consciously chose to bring an insane imp to terrorize the Earth. Okay, this isn't going to be easy for her, is it? This is not going to be easy for Nia. Nobody puts Mixie in a crystal on our watch. Uh, nobody puts Mixie in a crystal. Mm. Focus on stopping this imp with the rest of us. Mm. And tell Kara. Yeah, it's a good idea to keep the rest of the team into the well, I did the exact opposite of what a real hero would she do. She would not judge she you for this. For me. She would she not. That Nixie manipulated you. Yeah, she cares about you too much to let this are. get in the way of... Yeah. As am I. Or maybe tell them after you stop her. Maybe because then the trouble is gone and you can just look back on it and... Maybe not laugh. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't know. Mm -hmm. Ah, Lena! Lena, okay. Andrea. Okay, yeah. so we're definitely not getting Kelly this episode then. Full of charming coastline and an easy journey thanks to the cat Cat Ah, the cat Ah. Oh. You know, I have to say. Damn, that is a good suit. Good that is a good suit. So many years, I mean, I'm not surprised she's a CEO, but still, good suit. Good suit. You are your mother's spitting image. 
But who are the others? Oh, oh yeah, have the yeah, just this put Katie McGrath in like a different wig or something. Yeah. What was her name? Uh, Elizabeth Walsh. Elizabeth Walsh. Whoa. What's the matter? She's a dirty witch. Excuse me? What? Sadly, we don't have a room for you after all. Okay. You need to go. So one mention of her mother and then they reject her immediately? Or we hit her with this. Ah, no. Mm. no, not the phantom. No, no, no. Put that put that bitch down. Put that shit down. No, nay, 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 nay. Ever since you but she has also been wrongly persecuted. She is still dangerous. Only with my She's vengeful. So if we take those away from her, she's vengeful. Get her to see that revenge is never the answer. Those you think are close to you would just as soon be less than trust. You gave me what I needed. And now you're nothing more to me than an ad. <laughs> so now he loses his ship to you. Right. I have practical skills. You do? Like singing? Okay. Like great vocal cords? Um, well, any tips on how to get the magical current to connect to the component's electrical one? Have you tried turning it on, turning it off, <laughs> turning it on again? So on, then off, you then on what? again. I, I think that you should see if... An imp without magic is like a rocket ship without fuel. Okay, maybe That's don't talk magic. talk about him behind his back. Come on, that, that's not necessarily helpful either. What's your mom's name? Elizabeth Walsh? Elizabeth Walsh, yeah, that name does not Elizabeth go down. Elizabeth Walsh is a friend of my mother's. Elizabeth. And if you got any decency at all, you get the hell out of Fortune Bay. Great, now Peggy too. Now folks caused enough pain. They were in a coven. Like a witch's coven? A coven. Like witches. Not like cauldrons and spells. I see you in the news. Running arm in arm with a bulletproof alien. Okay, that's a fair point. But you don't believe in magic. Yeah, that's a that's and a fair comparison. Yeah. Right. Hasn't she yeah. met Mixie before? She's met Mixie's pillar, right? Years ago, I saw your mother set fire to a shed without lighting a single match. Your mum fled, Florence vanished, leaving my mum to deal with the fallout. No. Well, your mother wasn't the heroine. She was the villain. Oh, I get that God. your family is used to leaving a trail of bodies oh. in their wake. But you could at least have the decency to leave them buried. Oh, God, this is not helpful. This is not an epiphany. This is just a fucking nightmare that keeps resurfacing. This is not helpful information. This lock needs to be strong enough to withstand Damn, that that's Nixley might that's attempt. Great. I, mean, I can try dream energy. Yeah, it's great. And I can assist. And Nixie's here now. Do I have permission to right. Patrick Swayze in Ghost You? No. <gasps> Nixie, if you really want to help me. Oh, you mean the clay pot scene? The clay pot thing? A kitty? A cat? Is that a giant cat? That's literally a giant CGI cat. Holy crap. A giant cat. And a bazooka. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, jeez, a super sneeze. Oh, God. Imagine the hairballs coming out of that thing. Alright, how are we losing to a cat? Uh, oh, boy. Oh, God. She's got the dream lasso. Oh. Oh, damn. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Using laser eyes as a distraction, like a laser pointer. Oh yeah, bottle the cat. Bottle the cat. Yeah. We have two hours to be ready to deep our Nixley and avoid catastrophe. Oh. Fuck. Hey, why are you so chipper? Goodness Still sake. Don't have a working anti-magic cuff yet. What? So will I. Huh? Du doubles? Nixley, what did you do? Copy machine. Luther Corp, a copy machine. With her guard down, why not give the princess what she wants? Oh, a, co a, a copy of, Ni uh, of Nixie. Mm. Ergo, I will engage her in conversation until, 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 oh. Oh. That felt yucky. Oh, you just reabsorbed him. I mean, she has to tell at least Kara, right? Even if the others don't fully know, she might have to just tell Kara, right? Yeah, she wants to just tell Kara. Oh, oh god, okay. She won't react badly. She will trust me. She won't. It's not like she's going to kick her out the super friends. Stand by and what made enemies with her. I'm the one who let Nixley escape. Oh no, oh no, those eyes. I know it was so selfish and you can't forgive me, but Nixley is a master a manipulator. 
No, oh, she understands. Of course, she understands. Of course, she understands. What's important right now is that we learn from our mistakes and use okay. it to stop yeah. together. Couldn't have expected any other way. So, yeah. I just wish there was some way I could fix this. The woods? Is this where the coven was? A coven in the woods sounds very, very likely. Un like an underground thing. Definitely an underground coven. Oh, and she's got a shotgun. Oh damn! No, Which with a shotgun? Which with a shotgun? Okay. Oh, God, you look just like Elizabeth Walsh. Spitting image. Her daughter. Spitting image. Mm -hmm. She says you're a scientist. Why well, doesn't take a ghost for you to know that? A simple Google search would suffice. Oh, I don't trust computers. Huh. I get my information from the SARS. And the spirit world is is Elizabeth in the spirit world, just kind of watching over her daughter. That would be so sweet. That would be so sweet. Like you said, I'm a scientist, and I don't want to waste your time, but I don't believe in magic. Let the truth persuade you. I mean, you used to be Morgana. Can you really drop magic that quickly? Really? Whoa. Oh, flashback. Flashback time. Uh, uh, damn, Kate looks good with bangs. Yeah, Kate looks good with bangs. Yeah. Witchcraft requires a deep knowledge of the ears. We three worked quietly, content. Until Margaret started showing up with bruises on her face, a broken uh. arm. Her husband, Tommy, was well liked. No one believed he beat his wife. Oh, so that's why they Trophies. burned the shed down. We only meant to scare him. Oh. But the magic got away from us. Oh, they lost control, so they never actually meant to. Oh. So the death was an There's accident. No denying that fire was unnatural. And Lizzie called me once. Said she'd taken up with Lionel Luther. Uh. Said she was living under his control because she no longer trusted herself. So her mother was with Lionel. Oh, she's... Your mother sees you. And she's very proud of the woman you are. <laughs> that is what she needed. That is all the revelation and wholesomeness and happiness she needed. Yeah, to know that her mother was good all along. Let's yeah. While I know it's going to be challenging, I have complete faith in your ability to replicate my je ne sais quoi. Hmm. Better her than me. <laughs> better her than Jean? Really? Why better me than Jean? Oh, damn. Nixley? <sighs> Nixley? We have to say a whole name. Okay, never mind. It's about time. Here you go. Oh, <laughs> oh God. Please let this go. Please let this work. No, she's gonna. Oh no. Oh god. Oh for fuck's sake. God damn it. I'll get the projector. Oh god. Stay put. Oh, the projector, the, the Phantom Zone projector. I'm not going to kill you. The dragon is. The Kryptonian hell breathing dragon. Oh, green fire. Green fire. That's wildfire. That's wildfire. Oh damn. Supported overthrowing my insane father. Yeah. That imp was Mr. Mix's fiddlehead. Oh. oh boy. Mm. Oh, that's kryptonite fire. That's kryptonite fire as well. Oh. No matter what you say, you are not a murderer. Mm, did you not see the hell dragon? It was just you playing with magic. You're angry. And, and you have every right to be. I'm angry for you. You don't. You don't have to hurt people who can help you and are willing to help you. Nah. Okay. Never mind. Oh, Alex. No. Oh. Oh. Okay. I, I thought she actually did something to Alex just then. No. Oh no. She's taking Mixie. She's taking Mixie's Spidlick. Oh, the Phantom Zone projector. Stronger together. He's inside the crystal. Oh. Whoa. Who took her up? It was rare to catch Elizabeth in front of the lens. So enchanted with the world around her, she often forgot herself. Hmm. The selfie of witches. Hmm. For you, it's different. You have your mother's gift. Is she a witch too? <laughs> Does she have powers? Look, I said I questioned my cynicism. I didn't say I dropped it. Does Lena have magical power? Are they reincarnating Morgana for Supergirl? For it. I just need to find it. You would not have been able to use a stone if you didn't have the spark, Lena. 
You have the gift, should you choose to embrace. She has powers. She has magical witch powers. That's so cool. Damn. Okay. Yeah. So fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff. Um, I'll start with the Lena stuff actually, because that one, that stuff's kind of got me intrigued. The Lena stuff. So yeah, Lena, uh, L Lena went to Newfoundland um, via Catco Jet. So Andrea, like knowing how personal this was and how important this was to her, she personally funded this uh, trip back to Lena's homeland, which was very, very cool of her. Um, so she went to Newfoundland and she was actually trying to investigate um, her mother's whereabouts. I think, yeah, I think I, I, I did not think that they'd, they'd, they'd actually do this. I, I, th I initially thought she'd just find out who she was, what she did, and it would be like a nice kind of humanizing kind of experience and let her know what like an ordinary and sweet and gentle person her mother and mother was. But then, no, they gave her a whole ass intricate magical backstory and, you know, had death and destruction and deceit and. Uh, chaos un unraveling all around her and stuff. So yeah, Lelina's Le 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 kind of you know home kind of ancestry adventure is is, is an adventure in and of itself. So so yeah, but yeah, so she went and found her her mother's uh, kind of well the the daughter of one of her mother's friends and then another one of her mother's friends who is actually still alive to this day and everything. So yeah, so, so the daughter um, was the daughter of I think Margaret Bishop. Margaret Bishop. Um, the daughter who, like, like her, I think her, I think she mentioned her mother was killed, I think. Was her mother killed? I think, I, I really, like, because of what went down, I think, um, like, um, Elizabeth fled, um, and I think Elizabeth Walsh, too, I think, yeah, I think, I don't know, because I think, I was half, exp I don't know, like, El Elizabeth Walsh, I think that name surprised me, because I think, I think, I think Le Lena's middle name is Kieran, but I think that's never been any, I think, I, I, I don't know if, that's been specified. I mean, as as far as I know, that's been specified just to be, just to be like an Irish name and like a part of her past that she's actually retained in her life and in her identity. But I don't know if she's ever actually mentioned that actually connected to her mother or just like a, like a name in her family or something. So I'm not too sure. But um, but yeah, um, Elizabeth Walsh was her mother's name, Elizabeth Walsh. So that's cool. But um, but but because of what went down, I I think um. Um, Margaret died, and then Florence, um, as we saw, just kind of exiled herself to to their coven and everything. And then, um, and, and, and then, then Elizabeth fled and found herself in the arms of Lionel Luther instead. So shit went down, people went crazy, and then now everyone hates Elizabeth. Uh, now everyone hates Elizabeth, or Elizabeth, Walsh, or at least you know, like um, um, Margaret's daughter hates Elizabeth Walsh because of like um, of what uh, uh, of what she cost her. Her mother and, and and her family and everything, so not the greatest kind of news to receive. So yeah, her mother was in a co her mother and her two friends were in a coven, a coven, a witch's coven. As soon as I heard coven, I was like, with witches and magic and powers and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, I mean, there, there's not really like much else a coven can really be simplified down to. But still, like her mother was a witch. Her mother was a witch. She had powers, so you know she could do magic and all sorts of witchy stuff and everything and it was super cool and she had like her own two besties that she did magic with and everything so that was even cooler um but yeah but i think you know like i think what definitely kind of would have hurt in the beginning was actually being told but i mean granted it was someone who had a bit of bias being on the suffering end of her mother's magic but um you know um being told in the beginning that her mother was actually like her mother was an opportuni uh, like an opportunist and like a killer and and, and, and and someone who ruined everyone's lives and everything like like hearing that kind of and, and being told that she was a villain too because Alina has spent almost her entire adult life being like believing that she's a villain because of her connection to the Luther family and because of being under the Luther name like she spent so long and this was her like one of her few chances to be able to escape all of that and find out where she really comes from only to hear from some very very disgruntled kind of other kind of you know um, inhabitants of Newfoundland, that, or residents rather, that her mother was a villain and that she was bad and that she sucked and everything. So that that wasn't really the epiphany she was looking for. Looking for, um, you know, so that kind of sucked. And then of course uh, Margaret did give her the time of day, but then also, oh, Margaret, I think um, Margaret's daughter did give. Did, did, um, well, I think I mean she she said that her her name was Margaret too, but then people call her Peggy. So I think it was like like she just kind of like took on her mother's name too, or or something. So. Um, or wait, no, was she the actual Margaret Bishop? The, because I think she looked the same. She looked the exact same 
way, and I think that they they very likely use the same actress. I think I don't know. I think I can't. I think because I think she mentioned her mother dying, or like her. I think her, she definitely mentioned her like the father dying, but then like her father dying. But I don't know if she was the daughter or if she was actually Margaret Peggy Bishop. I, I I'm gonna go back and check that again. I need I need clarification. I need re clarification. Oh, I need, I need clarification. Oh yeah, no, okay. So she said, you know, she prefer, she she prefers Peggy to Margaret Junior. So she is the daughter. She is the daughter of Margaret Senior. So yeah, the daughter. I was right. Um. So yeah. Um. So yeah, so her, I think I think I think I don't know if she. I don't know if she mentioned her mother died. For fuck's sake! Let me just do it quickly. Just. One, 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 one additional, uh, like a few additional seconds. Okay, so I mean, she did, she, she, she did mention that she died, that she just withered away and stuff, so she like grew old and passed away, p- 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 presumably of natural causes. So, um, so yes, yeah, so all the stuff that went down. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, even I think even Florence actually um, kind of like clarifying and establishing the fact that like they they were not bad, which is that they were not inherently evil or bad, which is that they they just kind of came together. They discovered they had powers and they discovered they had the connection to the earth and all these different abilities as witches and stuff, and they just kind of got along together and hung out and did magical shit and everything. But then I think they but then one day Margaret showed up with you know signs of physical abuse and everything and. You know the fact that like the town people either didn't care or didn't know that. Um, well, I think they like that they 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 didn't know that um that her husband Tommy was actually an abusive scumbag. So so yeah. So then the women, the the the, the witches of um of Newfoundland, took it upon themselves to teach him a lesson, try and teach him to respect women and not to hit them or not to do anything to them. Um, and they only meant to scare him. They only actually meant to scare him. But then I think it was, it was um, Florence mentioned it was actually um, Elizabeth. Elizabeth's powers actually got just a little bit out of control, and then they ended up actually burning the place down and killing him inside. So, so yeah. Um, and I think which is fine. I think they. I think um, they never actually showed any witnesses like in the distance. They like like they 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 they, they, they claimed that you know oh like um, that fire was not naturally start I mean, well, I think it's not really necessarily hard to tell. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's just pretty easy to tell um, if a fire's been started naturally or unnaturally or something. So, you know, and I think especially if it's unnaturally, it kind of causes more questions to pop up. So then people start, you know, pointing things and everything. So, so yeah. Um, and again, yeah, I think the, the idea that people actually hate... Wi- I mean, well, yeah, I think, I mean, if, if, if they didn't, especially if they didn't know... Then that if they didn't know that Tommy could have been abusive, but then I think that I think with him being I think I don't know I don't know if she would still come forward then if if like if if it's like after he's dead then that would make a difference. But then I think they would probably still see murder as worse than abuse or something. But then all in all, they still revile and like um, hold greater disdain towards witchcraft and the freedom to practice magic than they do, you know, um, people actually beating and harming and maiming their spouse or their, 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 their partners. So just show you exactly what kind of state the world was in back then and what kind of state the world is in now. So, but yeah, I mean, I loved like her meeting Florence in that coven, like her actually following um, um, Andrea's final file, her final file transfer being on actually finding the whereabouts of Florence, um, of, of Florence um, Abbott and Lena finding her in in the middle of the woods, un- uh, under the middle of the woods, in 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 the coven which they originally started and everything, and her just kind of chilling out there in front of like a smoky flame in, in in front of all of her magical stuff and doing magic, and then she still has a shotgun, you know, like I mean, sure, I mean, I, I guess yeah, sure, we, 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 um, which powers might be cool and all, but then you can't resist or deny the power of a cool shotgun, so she still has man-made self-defense there just in case, um, and it also looks kind of flashy too, so. And it's also it's also something you never would expect. If 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 you tell someone that you know someone's a witch and and they they have, to, they have to kill them, then like that person would not be expecting anything other than maybe like a wand or like a swish of the wrists or something or some magic words, and then they think, oh, in that time I can easily do something. But then you just pull out a shotgun, surprise! Just you know, no like no, no one sees it coming. Like Lena definitely didn't see it coming. She didn't see it coming, so it clearly, clearly works. Clearly, Florence had the right kind of ingenuity in that particular instance. Um, but then, yeah, upon finding out who she was, she was more than happy to help Lena give her the epiphany she really needed and actually kind of, you know, tell her the real story behind their backstories and their meetings and their times together and everything. So, yeah, just three witches just chilling out in Newfoundland, just, you know, 
not necessarily getting up to no good, but actually, you know, like connecting with each other and their powers and using their powers and understanding magic and everything. So yeah, I think that is actually like 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 a bit of backstory. I would actually be, you know, I'm I'm actually curious to know just a little bit more about. So yeah. Um, but then, yeah, then after the incident then, so then uh, Margaret Bishop just grew old and withered away, and I think she, I think they said that they were kind of chased out and about by the townspeople, but then I think, I think Margaret still found a way to survive, or she still, or maybe she, they locked her up or something, or maybe they just kind of made her pay for her crimes in some way, and then she just kind of withered away, kind of like knowing that the other two were kind of gone forever and everything, and then... Florence, uh, I think, retreated and I think maybe exiled herself down to the coven where they first started and just kind of like remained in her final days. And I think, and I think she was in touch. She like like she was in touch with like the spirit world the entire time. So she like like from that day onwards, she was constantly, um, or at least I think I think no no I think at least well, not 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 from then on. But then I think at least from the day that Elizabeth died onwards, then once she then entered the spirit world, then she was actually because then like one, by the time she died, she had, had a daughter. So then. So then, yeah, um, so then she was in, in touch with her then, and then from that day on, like, um, um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth was telling her that her daughter would come back here one day in search for answers, and then she had to be ready to actually give to them and actually to tell Lena, like, you know, the true story and reveal the truth about her and her past and everything, so... So, yeah, um, and I think that's also, like, like, I think that is also, like, the sweetest sentiment, too. Like, Lena, Lena grew up constantly blaming herself for her mother's death and actually blaming herself for not doing anything and living in that living under that kind of cloud of judgment and shame and everything but then deep down like you know, like 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 all along you know um elizabeth was up above actually looking down on her daughter and hoping that she'd grow up to be safe and happy and proud and everything and then you know i think i think I, I feel like that would have been a cool reference to have like maybe florence being like you know um i've spoken like i've spoken to i mean you know, it, it might be a bit cheesy, or maybe I think if, if, if they like, if they could find a good, like a good enough way to execute it, but I think I think it would have been a cool reference for 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 Florence to actually be like, you know, don't worry, your mother wants me to tell you, just you know, it's not your fault. You were too young back then, so you know, you can stop blaming yourself now. You should have done a long time ago, but you can stop blaming yourself now. It's not it's not not your fault. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm you know, I I, I mean, she died, but still. And she died pretty young too. So, but 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 still, like in like like just just some kind of her being like a con maybe her being like a, like a conduit or messenger of some kind, being like you know, you, you know you're like your mother wants you to know you're very proud of you. she's very proud of you. I think she she she, she didn't mention something along those lines, but I think just just all in all, I think I think a more kind of present and more referential kind of kind of thing would have been more nice and I think I think her being like you know I'm like um like maybe just like 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 just, maybe just her mother being like you know you, you, you can stop blaming yourself you can stop you know beating yourself up over it and you know stuff like that so I don't, I, I don't know my, my I, I'm clearly not painting a good picture of what I wanted uh, of what I wanted to, to actually hear or see but still something referential and something for like 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 a, like a way for her like like Lena's mother to actually reassure her that it wasn't her fault, and to, and to put her mind at ease in that particular department would have been okay too. So, yeah, but I think for the most part, it was just it, it was just, it, it was just Elizabeth wanting her daughter to actually find out the truth in time and being ready and actually, you know, moving forward with this proper um, epiphany and this newfound kind of knowledge and everything. So, yeah, and then yeah, so then the final revelation, the final revelation comes in. Lena has the gift. Lena has the gift. She has the gift. And I think in this particular context, given all that they've revealed to us so far, the gift can only be one thing. Magical, mother-freaking powers. Magical, ma 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 magical, magical power. Magical powers. She, she has the gift. To what extent she has the gift, we don't know. But I think her, I think her saying the gift, I think her explicitly saying the gift, I think, I think it must mean that she actually has the same magical powers inside her waiting to be manifested um in the same way that um in the same way that, that elizabeth had magical powers i think these must then be i think these then have to be genetic and everything too so yeah but then i i, I think I don't, I, don't, I don't know if they actually mentioned i think how it came about i think maybe just like just like um lena um, just elizabeth finding some kind of newfound connection to to like to the earth and everything because because then they said that the, the magic wasn't just about powers and shit, but it was actually about actually finding and fostering connection to every leaf and twig and pine, every aspect of nature, because I think for them, that was what magic was, actually understanding, but also like learning to control and manipulate nature and its kind of, its courses and its kind of, um, like kind of aspects and everything, so 
I do wonder then if maybe just magic kind of just found her one day, or maybe if, if she discovered it one day, or maybe she actually kind of wanted. Maybe it, maybe if she was like 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 a like a naturally kind of nature kind of drawn woman, and she just kind of found herself drawn to a tree one day, and she just kind of did some stuff, and and then stuff came about or something. So I'm curious as, as to what the actual origins of the magic were, but either way, Lena has the gift, and I think I mean yeah, I think. Um, Lena herself even actually kind of pointed out how she went from cynicism and believing in magic because I think she's been a woman of science and technology her entire life too. So yeah, and then you know obviously like 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 she 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 works with a group of superheroes. You know, so many of whom have powers. One, one two of whom, all, all of whom, all of the well, yeah, I mean, oh no, like half of whom, half of or m- most of whom, most of whom are aliens with powers of all kinds and everything and, and you know, all the all these different technological things and everything. So most of whom are aliens of power, so then, you know, um yeah, I think I think I think, I think, I think in that scene France even pointed it out too, like, you know, you work with you work with an alien with powers and everything, but then you can't I, I actually I should, I think was it Florence? I think it might have been Florence, because I think she she, cause she was the one still in tune with magic and still working with magic. So I, I, I think it might it might have been her who pointed out that, you know, like you work with an alien that can deflect bullets and fly, but you can't believe it, but you struggle to believe in magic of all things. And I was like, that then got me wondering, like, you know, like, has she never met Mixie? Has she, has she never met Mixie Spidlick? Like, because then he, he, he showed up way back when. He showed up back, back in, like, season two, like, when when Monel first came back. Like, like, he showed up way back then. I think, pretty sure Le- um, Lena was introduced in season two as well. So, did she just never meet him? Did she never even, like, has she never even heard of him? Or. Oh, well, but I mean, even without Mixie, I think it, it, I think it, it, it's, it's it's a fairly good enough point that you know, like like aliens exist. But then aliens, then that's like that's also like, you know, that's also to do with more more like their their actual kind of alien biology and everything that actually adapts to Earth and makes them appear strong than they are. Because then under under Krypton's red sun, Supergirl is just like any regular human, as as, as we've seen, like like Supergirl and Superman, just like regular people with no additional strength. But then it's because of um the different like like the different climate and kind of um. Astrolo- a- astronomical kind of um, kind of climate and stuff um, of, of the galaxy and everything that actually gives them the ability to do to, to do what they do and like the yellow sun radiation and the low gravity and everything. So you know, like all that stuff makes them makes them out to be super people. Um, and then Jean is just Martian. He just has his natural kind of telepathy and everything. And Nia's a dreamer. She's notorious. She can dream stuff, and she can, you know, conjure. So you know, different factors come into play with these kind of things. But yeah, but I mean, it's 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 a fair enough point because I think these things could also easily just like just be seen as magic too. But then the only the only other alien magic is of course the fifth dimensional imp stuff. But then even then, that's just because they're from another dimension. So then for them, their powers just kind of can easily be passed off as magic. So. Yeah, um, but then the only actual kind of earth-based magic would be like like the the I think the only kind of actual like conventional and traditional magical magic would be would would, would be the kind that Elizabeth and her friends actually practice too. Like 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 that one being like earth-based magic and that one being actual kind of traditional kind of magic too. Um, instead of like otherworldly superpowers, would would, would would like that would be like this would be proper magic. Well, not pro- not necessarily proper magic, but it's like this would be more like traditional or more like conventionally understood kind of magic. So. Yeah, but then um, Lena then initially just, um, then actually decided to let go of her cynicism and her skepticism to actually try and find out what this is, and then she finds out and hears the story and everything. Um, so that happens, and then her skepticism is tested even more when she finds out that she possesses the exact same powers as her mother. So Lena has powers. Lena's a witch. She's a witchy, witchy witch. Um, you know, so she has actual power. So yeah, you know, just not a far cry from Morgana, not the not the farthest of cries from Morgana Pendragon from way back when. I just when I tell you I was obsessed with that damn show growing up, I mean I was obsessed with the capital O. I just would not let it go, and I still can't let it go today. That show, Morgana, is a big reason. Um, one of the many reasons as as, as to why I am the way I am, but. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, yeah, it, it, it's good. It's good to see Katie being it. Um, it's, it's good to see Katie McGraw being able to actually revisit some more magical roots in yet another role, yet another role she plays. So, yeah, that then. Oh God, this being the final season too. Great. Don't do do not look. I am already wishing hard enough for a Sentinel and Guardian and Dreamer spin-off. Okay, I'm already wishing hard enough for that. 
do not make me wish. Do not. I beg of you. Do not. Do not make. Do not make me wish for a magical Lena spin-off. Do not make me wish for like a like a spin-off where Lena explores her magic and actually becomes a fully fledged technological witch or something. Do not. Don't. 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 Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Okay. Just. Just don't. Just. Don't, that's actually what I'm asking. Don't do this to me. Like. Don't make me want to see this because, you know, I already have my own skepticism regarding pre-existing spin-off ideas, so don't, 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 don't put like another one on my roster only for me to end up being disappointed or something, because then, you know, Lena with magic. My god. My good god. Um, that would be, that would be magical. No, absolutely pun intended. Absolutely pun intended. That would be magical, but, you know, that is also like, again, introducing this stuff so far into the final season two, like Lena having magic. I mean, on the other hand, though, it is also completely, it, it is also completely, completely up to her whether or not she explores it, because then if she doesn't explore it, then there's no need for a spin-off, there's no kind of, you know, there's no continuation of that aspect of her life, she might just kind of stick to being regular human Lena Luthor with, with, with um, awesome levels of intellect and awesome ideas for invention, I mean, like, 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 like she could just as easily stick to her technology side and actually leave the magic aside and stuff, but then if she does decide to explore it, then that is something we've got to see unfolding on the screen. So, you know, don't, just, just, just don't tease us. Just don't tease us. But I think, yeah, no, I think, uh, I think, uh, I think ultimately, though, it, it is definitely up to Lena as to how she proceeds forth with this knowledge of knowing that not only was her mother a witch, but then those same, you know, powers have been passed down to her too. So now she, so now she's also superpowered. Now she's also, like, in, in, in some way, in some way, she's also superpowered. So, yeah. Oh God, the team is gonna flip out. Kara's gonna, you know, flip out. The team's gonna flip out, finding out that one of their best friends is is, is now a witch as well. And like like her mother was a witch, and she worked with witches, and now Lena's a witch and everything. So, the Watchtower is about to have one section, it's just a dedicated coven, a dedicated coven to, to Lena. So. Oh, God damn. Yeah, but that was some incredible stuff on Lena's end. That was some incredible stuff on Lena's end. So I'm hoping she can come back now with a fresh, cleared mind and like like a a mind full of actual, actual accurate information and not just kind of biased, kind of hateful kind of notes from, you know, people who survived like that kind of magic. So hoping she can move forward with some actual kind of epiphany knowledge and epiphany experiences and everything. So... I do very much look forward to seeing her coming back and hopefully hopefully co coexisting on screen with Kelly for once. You know, Guardian Kelly and Magical Lena, are you trying to kill me? Are you actually trying to end my life right now? Because if you are, you are borderline succeeding. You're borderline succeeding. So, yeah. And then, yeah, the Mixy stuff, the Mixy Spidlick stuff. So, yeah, we had Mixy back, and of course, he opens with a musical. He, he kind of opens with a musical to, to, try and, to try and actually recite um, the backstory between him and Mixley and the whole fifth dimensional kind of family squabble drama thing. Um, and the song he did, too, I, I think the, the, the lyrics aren't coming to my head right now, but I think the, the song he did, like the lyrics, the tune, I definitely, I definitely did recognize those tunes, and I'm sure any kind of musical experts or any kind of musical enthusiast will easily be able to identify it like that. Um, but for me, it, like, it, it sounded familiar, but it was taking like, a lot longer for me to, uh, to identify, and I, I still haven't ad identified it, well, um, what, it, what it was. Um, but it, but I think, I think quite, like, a few of the lyrics stayed the same, and I think that's why it actually helped. Like, he only, like, like, there was only like, like, the main verses he actually paraphrased to fit Nick Clay's story, and then the actual main chorus of it, he probably kept the same because it fit. Um, but either way, he used the musical. He used the musical number to actually... Um, try and recite next to his backstory and his connection to it and everything that went down and everything so there was that whole stuff and then, and then there was some interesting intel about the seven totems and Jared's crystal and like all sorts of other fifth dimensional kind of um kind of toys and magical kind of you know like relics that help her get power and everything so I think um I think Jared, I think it was Jared's totem that gave him like power over everything like magic and reality and life and time and everything so basically basically in Infinity Stone I think you know basically in Infinity Stone but then he but then, but then it, it started off like um the All Stone the All Stone and then it actually started off as one as the All Stone but then it actually got shattered got shattered and then spread out across reality and everything so then it literally it quite literally became Infinity Stone shattered across reality um but then the totems were but then those totems were also I think seven totems in total and they were all disguised as like completely different kind of random kind of things. It was near impossible to actually find them unless yeah, I think I think probably unless you had the blood of Jared inside the actual crystal thing, and then Mixie was just Mixie just had to be a descendant. Mixie just had to be a descendant of this Jared guy um, person. So 
Yeah, um, so yeah, um, yeah, just, god damn, so then, yeah, so then, like, the, the entire, the, the entire episode, also because Nick Slee was around, and, and, and she could easily sense his magic from wherever he went, like, the entire episode was pretty much Nick, um, Nick Slee trying to find some way to be useful, some way to be helpful, without having to use his powers, only to find out that he has been using his powers for so long that he's actually become kind of fully reliant on them, and he doesn't really know what to do without them, and he can't even relate to Earthly. I mean, you would think, like, a fifth-dimensional imp would... I mean, yeah, I mean, fifth-dimensional imp, I guess, is, 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 is intentionally a different dimension, so you can't fully expect it. I mean, you know, like, um, you know, Brainy being from the same dimension, same planet and everything would likely know. Um, or not, not, well, he worked on the same planet. He, he, worked, in a, he worked on Earth in, in, in the future, so, you know, he would know about previous technology and actual past kind of... Um, past resources, but then Nixie just kind of being like a completely dependent kind of fifth dimensional imp, he was not that fluent with earth technology or earth sciences, so he didn't really know exactly what to do, um, besides from, I think, like, I don't know, he said something about, like, the changing the particles of the, what, I don't know, he said something, and he just, could, like, 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 he went to, to Alex and John first, and found out he couldn't do anything there, then he went to Neon Plainy and also couldn't find out he didn't, do, uh, also found out that he couldn't do anything there either, so the entire episode was just him, trying to find ways to be useful, trying to find ways to actually be a part of the conversation and actually try and do his bit, which you can definitely admire. You can definitely admire him still wanting to do something even with his powers, kind of, even like, like having to restrain himself from his powers, so... Uh, so, yeah. And then in the end, too, he still kind of gives himself up. He still sacrifices himself to actually try and save, um, to try and save the super friends and actually give himself up into the crystal, and then they get, they both get kind of, like kind of tractor beamed away by someone somewhere, there's no idea like like who's taken them or where they've gone, so they get tractor beamed away, so there was that. But um but yeah, Mixie was fun in this. Mixie was definitely fun. I think I think, I think um he also had to kind of deal with the fact that he actually betrayed Mixley too. He initially was on Mixley's side and actually was gonna help her and actually help her win the case and but then in Mixley's words he felt that the wind changing ch changing direction, changing speed and everything, so then he switched over to what he thought was the winning side. To try and save his own skin, so he was not. He was not. He was not. He was not the best of friends to Nixley in the end, and he was definitely like like a bigger factor in her feeling betrayed and everything. So, and he even called her crazy. He even called her crazy in front of the judge, which was not the most helpful thing either. So he's made mistakes, and he's you know done, made some very very bad non friendly choices. So he had to pay for those. And then yeah, so um, and then we had like Nia feeling very very guilty about her kind of hand in this whole Nixley going free thing and she spent the entire episode feeling like like let let she spent the entire episode doing the opposite of what her boyfriend had been doing with like his feelings and instead of actually eating away we use because of her guilt she let the guilt eat away at her and actually kind of consume her and actually just feeling worse and worse by the minute and everything and then you know feeling even worse because she literally thought that you know Kara would actually hate her or be disappointed in her or something because of what she did um you know, which was not the most comforting. You know, I think even that, even that kind of confrontation scene was actually done so well in, in, in like the case. You know, like like I, I genuinely kind of was afraid that you know she'd just get kind of berated or you know just yelled at or something. But no, no, I think I think the important thing to remember there was that, you know like she has been around in Kara's life long enough, both personally and professionally, for Kara to know that that this is not something that Nia would have done out of malice or ill intent or any kind of predetermined knowledge, like, like, any predetermined knowledge, because I think she, she literally kind of, like, did not know who, 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 um, who she was, and I think even Kara actually, um, referenced, um, earlier in the episode that she, 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 she probably should have mentioned something beforehand, but then, did it in her defense, she never really thought she'd seen it again, so she didn't really see the point in it, but then, yeah, but I think that intel, def that intel definitely could have actually helped Nia actually kind of recognize her beforehand, and actually make her more kind of, so, more, more kind of actual um kind of solid decision and not to say that, not to say that that's an, not to say that that then makes it Kara's fault either but then you know um you know I think you know Kara was that Kara wasn't was not only able to reassure Nia that she wasn't disappointed in her or that she wasn't mad and mad at her in any way but then she also kind of clarified that you know like um you know like Nick Sleet is a master manipulator she used you she used your fears and your worries and your desires against you to get what she wanted is it is what she does. So it's really just like not your fault, and you shouldn't keep blaming yourself for it. So, you know, um, makes me very, very happy to just kind of see, you know, um, Kara actually supporting and standing by Nia no matter what happens, and actually reassuring her that she, you know, still is like a very, very kind of solid and very, very good-willed and good-hearted kind of person and stuff. So, 
So yeah, but um, I think I think I think that's also I think I mean I think it just kind of speaks testament to what their friendship and what their relationship is like at this point. But I think and I think it is to be expected. But I think it's, it's, it, it, it like there's also like a really kind of like a like 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 kind of kind of kind of like a like a painful kind of bit of sweetness to it. Um, with Kara just being just so genuinely worried about um, with Nia being so genuinely worried about what Kara thinks and if Kara's gonna hate her after this, you like 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 she, you know, it like immediately does kind of like like because of how careful she usually tries to be and how kind of like how anxious about her own skill set and how anxious about her own presentation she is, you know, um, she does immediately kind of jump on the conclusion that you know oh, oh, if I tell them this, then they're all gonna hate me and then none more so than Kara. Kara's just gonna, you know, like disown me from the super friends or something, but. No, she like just gen- genuinely was worried that you know like Kara wouldn't be able to see past this being a mistake and would probably blame her harder than she's already blaming herself and stuff like that. But no, she does kind of confront her and tell her the truth, and then you know Kara does reassure her like you know sure you made a mistake, a big one, sure, but you know that's what we've all done. Like like they have all made questionable choices, they've all made made kind of horrible mistakes in the name of love and wanting to do things for your loved ones one last time again and all that kind of stuff so Kara actually could like reassuring her that you know like what you did is what any other human any other human would do and also like what any other superhero would do when given such a kind of you know like a given such a such a such a, such a, such a heart testing kind of choice so yeah um so yeah seeing that scene between Kara and Nia was really cool after all that time actually seeing them like actually seeing Kara being able to reassure Nia and actually trying to comfort her and everything and actually you know informing her like you know okay that's another lesson of being a superhero actually learn from your learn from your mistakes and move past them and don't let them define you or anything so yeah that was cool Kara and Nia so I mean we we, 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 we've had a fair bit of actual solid friendship and relationship stuff with with with, uh, Lena and Nia in the past that has been that's been really cool that's been really cool but you know seeing Kara and Nia actually communicating and actually you know getting along to you I think and this was fairly brief it's fairly brief but I think you know like having more of Kara and Nia would be just you know magnificent so yeah this was this was good this was good um, and then yeah, I think going going quickly quickly going back to the Lena thing, um, you know, um, I think they also mentioned that like um, after the incident happened and then they all went their separate ways, um, Elizabeth did actually manage to kind of um, start a new life and find a new life with Lionel Luther as well. So I think I don't, I, I think I don't remember there being any kind of reveal in the past that um, Lionel Luther had actually kind of maybe left Lillian and actually gone with. Um, Elizabeth instead, but I think um, I I hadn't I haven't really known or been familiar with any kind of previous connection that Elizabeth had to um, Elizabeth had to the Luther family. Like I I I, I, literally, I literally thought that you know um, maybe like um, that maybe Lillian just kind of wanted a daughter, so she actually finally got, and like Lionel just wouldn't give her one, so she she just kind of took stuff into her own hands and decided to adopt instead, and then that's how she found Lena. So I think I. Uh, uh, up until now, I was fully unaware that there might have been any other kind of prior kind of um, connections from Lena's side to the Luther side. So uh, apparently, no. Like, um, thingy, um, Elizabeth did actually kind of uh, start, start uh, find a new life with uh, Lionel, and he was a, a Luther. He was a very, very rich man, so he likely gave her what like everything she wanted in life and gave her stability and everything. But then that d- um, that does kind of make me wonder, like, would she? Does that then mean that? But I mean, because I think Lena was a was she then adopted? I think did did, did like was Lena a, like born before? Because I mean, she can't have been right. Can she have been like? I think I don't. I think I don't. I think they haven't really specified if Lena was before was if Lena was before if Lena was born before or after Lionel actually um before Elizabeth and Lionel got together. Because then if she was born afterwards, then I think that kind of makes me question like you know could. Could Lena be the daughter of Elizabeth and Lionel? So then, technically, even biologically, she is she is actually like a half Luther. Like, because I mean, I mean, further that would just be like a worse nightmare. Like, okay, being adopted by the Luthers is bad enough, but then actually being conceived by half, by, 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 by one of them, you know, is actually just like a kind of worse nightmare coming to life and becoming true and everything. So I think I'm I'm kind of curious because I think they I think that they, they just haven't clarified it, um, at, at least. To my knowledge, they haven't really clarified um, whether or not she was actually born before or after her mother met Lionel. But then, if it was after, then I think that kind of brings brings that even more to the question, like you know, uh, of whether or not Lena is actually the biological the, the biological daughter of Elizabeth Walsh and Lionel Luther, but then the adoptive daughter of Lillian, uh, of Lillian. Like maybe um, 
maybe she like maybe maybe if Lillian was actually jealous of Lionel for being kind of taken away from her or, or being kind of like um taken up by this new woman from across the pond or something, so maybe she was actually jealous of Elizabeth, so then she decided to actually take her daughter away from her and be like, you know, like you get each other, but then I get your daughter and I'll raise her as my own or something. Um, maybe I think I could be wrong about all of this. I think it's just it's just I I I can't remember any acknowledgement of Lena like from before or after they mentioned Elizabeth being with Lionel, so I'm not too sure. I think I'm, I might either have to go look that up or actually wait until, like, if, if, if that's going to become, like, another major reveal that she's actually biologically a Luther too. But I do not know. I do not know. I think um, she was adopted into the family. That much is, is that much is known. That much is known. But whether or not she's actually biologically fully, like, a Walsh or even a part Luther um, is, yet to be un- is yet to be told. So, so yeah. But yeah, so that is pretty much all I have, um, all I've actually managed to gather from this one. So a fun kind of mixed episode of Lena finding out her true heritage and her true, her true very magical heritage. And then of course some actual kind of other kind of interdimensional magic from Mixie and Mixley and everything. So fun stuff on both ends. So I think going forward, I think I'm hoping... I'm hoping we we can see more of Lena in the, maybe maybe um because I think because I think we got I think we got we got like two episodes two two episodes of Lena to begin with and then we got two episodes of Kelly and now we have two two episodes of Lena and one more episode of Lena again so I think maybe we have actually like 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 two of each two of each and they just keep kind of swapping Kelly and Lena out, in, in and out with each other and everything so I think maybe next episode if if, if we have Lena back again maybe we're gonna see her actually maybe just out of curiosity or maybe actually disc. Maybe next episode can be dis- like her discussing everything she's found, her discussing the truth that she's found with Andrea, and then Andrea kind of helping her kind of decide which path to go down, of either leaving the magic aside or actually picking it up and actually exploring it, even even in its most simplistic state, actually exploring what what, like what magic is available to her and actually her discovering what she can do. And then after that, we might have more Kelly coming back and actually doing her thing. And then, I mean, I mean like at some point, hopefully, hopefully at some point we can actually have Kelly and Lena like coexisting at the same time, in the same frame, in the same episode, on the same camera, and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully, hopefully we get, we, we like hopefully we're actually getting close to the going getting closer to the episode where we can actually have Kelly and Lena back again, you know, coexisting with each other in the same episode and everything. So yeah, in good time again, all in good time. All good things come to those who wait. I'm just kind of sick and tired of fucking waiting. So yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. But no, it's going to be fun. So I very much look forward to seeing what the rest of the season has in store and seeing how this kind of story reaches its beautiful ending. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have. That's pretty much all I have from this one. So that was Supergirl, season 6, episode 11. So thank you guys, as always, so much for being here and for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then salt and burn that like button. Uh, comment on what you the episode and what you will up next time on Supergirl. Uh, once again, the full length reaction will be available on Patreon, so you can go check that over there. And yeah, that is it. So, I will see you guys next time.